Hello everyone, I'm Wesley from School of Net and Code.Education and today I have a special guest here, Taylor Otwell, the creator of Laravel Framework, the most popular PHP framework of today. Taylor, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for your time. I know you are very busy coding Laravel 5.1. But I'm sure the Brazilian community appreciate this. So, Taylor, how are you doing? Oh, doing pretty good. Uh, like you, uh, the latest Laravel features and past few days have been working on some testing stuff, uh, just trying to improve the unit testing features in Laravel. So that's kind of been my focus the past uh, couple of days. Okay, great. Taylor, I have many questions for you about the Laravel project, but before, I'd like to know how long have you been working with PHP? I started working with PHP probably back in 2010, so it's actually only been maybe five years or so. And at first I was doing .NET and then I got into PHP because it's so much, it's so much kind of simpler to get started and host it and, and everything. And, um, then I played with a few frameworks like Code Igniter and eventually wrote Laravel. Okay. And have you ever contributed to other open source projects before Laravel? Uh, yeah, before Laravel, I wrote a um, dependency injection container for uh, Code Igniter, which was, I think, the first dependency injection container to use reflection to do automatic resolution in PHP. And that was actually my first open source project and it was called a CI inject. And uh, I think that's the only one I did before Laravel. Since I've done Laravel, I've contributed to a few other just all other projects. I did have one like a uh, three or four line change in Composer back um, a few years ago. That's um, my other claim to fame. <laughs> <laughs> and what about the name Laravel? Where does it come from? It doesn't really have a significant meaning. I just kind of made it up because it. I have a really hard time uh, coming up with names at the time, so I just kind of made up a word that sounded cool and and ran. It, so. Oh, okay. And how do you feel with all Laravel's repercussion in the community? It's the most popular. PHP framework on GitHub. It's it's amazing. Yeah, it is pretty crazy. I never expected it to be that big. I, I remember when I first released it, I thought that, you know, if you, some people would use it just if it had good documentation or whatever, but I never thought it would be as popular as Code Igniter or especially as popular as Symphony or anything like that. So it's definitely exceeded, um, you know, my wildest dreams. <laughs> but uh, It's been really fun. Okay, and in your opinion, where or which part of the Laravel do you think that should be improved, but you don't have enough time to work on it? Well, I have a lot of time now, but since I work on Laravel full time, so almost anything I want to do, I have time to do now. So that, like I said, the past few days I've been working on unit testing because I feel like that's been other other uh, features have come into the framework and that sort of hasn't gotten any upgrades in a while, probably several years. So I'm trying to improve a lot of that stuff so that it's very easy to to stimulate visiting pages and making sure that the right data is returned from your controllers and verifying that the right data is in your database and all that. And just trying to make it a lot more straightforward because I think a lot of people, um, they would like to get into doing more testing of their applications, but it's just kind of a hard subject to get into if you've never done it before. So just trying to make it a lot easier. Okay. And this feature is about testing is going to be released with Laravel 5.1? Yes, this will all come out in Laravel 5.1, which isn't too far away. It should only be, you know, four or five weeks until that's released. And the migration process about Laravel 5.0 and 5.1, how, how is it going to be? It's actually really easy. Probably only about five minutes to upgrade from from 5.0 to 5.1. There's no, uh, no big cha breaking changes or anything. It's really simple. Okay. And... And do you have an idea about why Laravel was too accepted by the PHP developers 
Just remembering that we have spectacular frameworks like Symfony and Zen framework. Why are developers choosing Laravel? Developers like it because it's it's really easy to learn and it, it's really easy to do um, common tasks. So like one kind of my go-to example is like logging someone in to your website or doing authentication. That can be sort of a pain in other frameworks, but in Laravel, it's actually really easy out of the box. And then also, I think the educational resources available, the documentation people seem to like. And then, of course, with Laracast, you have hundreds of videos to teach you how to use the framework. So that's a huge advantage when you have an entire library of video tutorials for your framework that people can go watch. Um, but I think just the ease of use, you know, when I first released Laravel, um, people were kind of looking for something that was modern, but at the same time, really productive and fast to use and was kind of practical in a way. So I think that's why people sort of latched on to Laravel. Um, and we can see that Laravel use uh, some pack Symfony packages. And mm -hmm. why Symfony? Why these packages? Why don't build it by yourself? And how do you see Symfony today and PSR7 that's coming up? Yeah, so the main, the probably the main Symfony components we use are um, HTTP Foundation and Symfony Routing, which gives you um, the HTTP, the HTTP request and response objects, of course, and then the routing engine you know, basically routes requests into your uh, controllers and stuff. And those are sort of a pain to write by hand, and there's really really involved i guess so i didn't really want to rewrite all the http stuff when i could be focusing on like eloquent or something more fun so it just made sense to use symphony because it's it's you know probably the most popular components and they're well tested and they're used by thousands of people so if i pick something that was like um, smaller. I don't have the same user base and testing that Symphony has, so I can tr I trust the Symphony components, I guess, more than any other components um, that are out there that they're going to be maintained and stuff. Um, yeah, so that's I think those are probably the two main Symphony components people use. There are a few other Symphony components that are used by the framework, but they're not um, they're not really um, emphasized, I guess you could say. And um, okay, and. You, we can see that you use Eloquent uh, with Laravel, and why not Doctrine? Uh, do you see? Is there any any reason for that? Why start building something from the scratch if we have a Doctrine or other persistence libraries? Yeah, so Laravel's ORM is pretty different from Doctrine in the fact that it's an active record ORM as opposed to a data mapper. And when I first came to PHP, I, um, I, I came from .NET, which doesn't really have a real active record pattern. So I had used kind of data mapper, but I found Doctrine to be, it's just a little bit harder to learn, I think, than Eloquent a little bit more time consuming. With Eloquent, you can just make a class and start inserting records into the database really quickly. So it's very practical and very fast to work with. Whereas Doctrine is a little bit more time consuming to set up. They both end up, they're both pretty powerful ORMs um, and probably the two most powerful ORMs in PHP, the two most popular. Um, but they're just so different in the way they work and sort of the approach. So people tend to really like one or the other. And um, I'm I'm kind of more the type that likes the active record because it's just a little more convenient and fast to use. And it works really well for the applications I'm building. It just suits them really well. Um, so, yeah, I think that, um, you know, they're so different. There's room for a, a good dev record. ORM. Okay. And for people that really love Doctrine, uh, do you recommend that we can use Laravel with Doctrine instead uh, Eloquent? Yeah, there are a decent number of people that do that. I know um, uh, people have put out third-party packages to bring Doctrine support into Laravel or to make it easier to integrate Doctrine so that you don't have to configure everything by hand. And um, it integrates you know, the console commands from Doctrine and brings them into Laravel and things. So yeah, I know quite a few people are using Doctrine with Laravel and some people even use things like Twig with Laravel for templating. So um, you can bring in anything you want, really. It's just the default is um, eloquent and blade. And then you can bring in, if you want to change them out, something different. 
Okay, and we are in Laravel 5.0. What can we expect about Laravel 5.1? I saw your screencast about broadcasting. It's yeah. a really cool feature. I really like it. Do you have any other feature that you intend to, to launch with the 5.1? Yeah, I, well, it's not really a feature, but probably one of the biggest news points is uh, the Laravel LTS release with 5.1 because this is the first LTS release Laravel's ever had. And it's something that people have been asking for more over time as bigger businesses start to use Laravel. And of course, Symphony 2.7, which releases this month as well, is an LTS release. And so we'll be based on the LTS Symphony packages and then Laravel 5.1 will be LTS. So it gives businesses... Um, a little bit more stability where they know they're going to get a few years of bug fixes and, and security fixes uh, before they have to upgrade so they can make a longer term commitment to the framework. And then on the feature side, of course, I, I really like the broadcasting stuff. Um, I kind of forget what features are in new versions, but I know that the directory structure is a, is a little cleaner. Um, what else? I think those are the two of the it's main the things. testing stuff. Yeah, testing. And then, of course, uh, PSR2. So the co whole code base will be converted to code format. And, of course, uh, your own app will be PSR2. So that makes um, standardizing your code structure a little easier because before Laravel used, it didn't really use, it had kind of had its own standard. It didn't use a published standard. So that's a little more convenient so that uh, developers know how to format their code and stuff. Okay. And... For example, in Zen Framework and Symfony, we have the concept of bundles and modules. We can see that Laravel, we don't have this kind of entity called like model or bundle. Of course, we can create our own modules and register the service providers. But uh, what do you think this approach, this main difference between Laravel and these other two frameworks? You know, I just... Um... I like to try to encourage people to write packages that are just sort of PHP and, and sort of framework agnostic. And then you can add a service provider to bring in more convenience for Laravel. But you can write your packages where they can work with anything. And then you kind of add these uh, bundle or module providers to make them work more conveniently with frameworks. And I know like Jeffrey Way has done that with a few of his packages, even on a uh, Laracast. And so I'm not I'm so focused on writing their packages really hard tied to Laravel because um, it's just, I'm not sure it's a totally good idea. But. Oh, okay. And Taylor, just to finish it, our chat here, uh, how, how do you see the future of PHP and the future for the Laravel? Of course, the challenges that you are facing to maintain this framework. I know we have a large community helping you and have many packages and so on but we know that the face of laravel is the taylor hotwell how, how do you see that and the challenges that you have to face uh well i'm really excited about the future of php especially with php 7 coming out and i already know that laravel runs about twice as fast on php 7 so that's going to be a nice performance upgrade when that comes out as far as laravel goes you know i think we're in I think Laravel 5.1 is probably my favorite release so far. It's just really clean and polished and stable. And uh, I think I've been revamping all of the documentation to make it much more detailed, much more um, thorough. And I think this is really going to be the best release that we've ever done. And so I think that the challenges going forward are, uh, you know, with any web framework, uh, the web evolves so fast and you have to try to keep up with how are people building their apps? So a lot of people now they're using, you know, JavaScript front ends from the web app and, um, you know, people are using Laravel apps for phone backends and stuff like that. So just staying modern and, and staying um, in tune with the features that the community wants, like the event broadcasting thing. Um, I, I would have used that in Forge and Envoyer quite a bit if it had existed in Laravel. I just did it all by hand. And just trying to keep things really modern and fresh and convenient for people while, um, you know, not uh, losing focus. Okay. And Taylor, uh, I, forget, I forgot to ask, can you pitch us about Lumen? 
and then forge an environment we know that is your two services you provide in Laravel. Yesterday, I recorded a screencast using Forge. The Brazilian people really like it. And yeah. I'm trying to do that. The same thing with the Envoyer that uh, I thought fabulous that you can deploy your application to many servers at the same time. Uh, can, you, can you do a, a little pitch about this? Yeah, so first, uh, Lumen is a course and that's basically a Laravel based micro framework. So um, there are some people that they're say you're just building like a JSON API and you don't really need views or sessions or anything like that. Lumen is a super framework. It's even faster than something like Silex, but it gives you the convenience of you have the Laravel database packages, you have the Laravel caching stuff and uh, the routing is very similar to Laravel. So it feels just like Laravel, except it's just smaller and a lot faster. And it's for kind of microservices and JSON APIs. And so you can check that out at uh, Lumen, L-U-M-E-N dot Laravel dot com. Uh, Forge is, it configures servers for you. So it links to your DigitalOcean or Linode account. And then it, it creates servers and installs PHP and Nginx and MySQL and all that good stuff. And then you can add subdomains and SSL certificates and cron jobs and basically do all your server management right from the Forge UI. And then if you need more complex deployments and with zero downtime, you can use Envoyer. So Envoyer doesn't actually configure your server. So you have to use Forge to do that. But once you have your servers configured, you can deploy to multiple servers at the same time with zero downtime because it uses symlinks and creates um, new release directories for every deployment that you do. And that lets you do easy rollbacks too. So if something goes wrong with the deployment, you can just roll back to something that wasn't broken or whatever. So it's a really nice service for zero downtime. Uh, great. And I don't know if you can give us, but do you have any numbers uh, about the users or the how many de deployment process did, did you have with Envoyer and the Forge? I know with Envoyer, I saw the other day, um, let me see. I know it's a lot of deployments so far with Envoyer. Let me see just exactly how many there are. Oh, it's great. Uh, let me see. So it looks like there's been about 5,000 deployments with Envoyer. Um, those actually clear out over, um, I guess it's seven days. So that's in the past seven days. There's been uh, 5,000 deployments. So quite a, f quite a few deployments just in the past week. Okay. Taylor, uh, I know you are very busy. You have too many things to do to, to finish this version for Laravel. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, are you posting this video in our blog and YouTube channel, mainly for the people from Brazil? But of course, this interview is in English, so I think everybody can see and to understand a little bit more about Laravel and the future of this framework. Taylor, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.